Uh, can I also ask you about the terrible news this morning that Mike Freer, one of your uh, Tory con uh, co colleagues in the House of Commons, he's the Justice Minister, that he's going to stand down at the next election from his seat in uh, Finching Golders Green in North London. Very strong uh, Jewish uh, community there. Um, he's been very supportive of Israel since the 7th of October attacks. Uh, and he has been facing non-stop you know, death threats, threats to him and his family. Uh, to, um, he's had an arson attack in the last month. He's been advised by police to wear a stab vest. Given the, uh, the killings of, uh, well, we obviously saw Joe Cox was killed in 2016 horrifically by a, a right-wing extremist, but then we had the killing in 2021 of David Amos. So David Amos, another one of your Tory colleagues, by an Islamist extremist. Um, the same Islamist extremist, Ali Harbi Ali had actually apparently visited Freer's constituency office previously, but he wasn't there. So that's obviously going to raise concerns. Mike Freer has basically said, I'm out. I, I can't live. I can't live like this anymore. We're going to be talking to him on the show yeah. in just half an hour's time. Um, how have we got to position in 21st century Britain, Isarian, where democratically elected politicians have to stand down for fear of their lives? Yeah, it's awful. Uh... I think many of us have had death threats. I've had death threats. We've had attacks on our offices. This went on during the last election. Uh, spray painted, um, you know, decaying rats posted to the door and, uh, in hope that somebody would pick it up and catch something. All that sort of thing goes on, I'm afraid, too often. And do you know who's uh, behind uh, it? And, well, there seem to be lots of different individuals and some organisations are behind it. There's a lot of extreme people on the left as well as there are people on the right. And there's also, as you know, uh, a lot of people that have come into the UK uh, and have actually been stirring up trouble. The latest whole issue since the start of Gaza, um, you know, we've been on at the police a lot about not uh, being very tough on the kind of uh, stirring up of violence and hatred that's been going on in some of these marches. And so the, the reality is that this is now becoming part of the normal for politicians and it shouldn't do, I accept. But the one thing that we do need is the police to act and to act swiftly when anything like this happens. And to tell someone to wear a stab vest, I have to tell you, it does say to you that that means we aren't in control anymore yeah. of the streets by the police, which I don't think is right. And frankly. that's the issue. I mean, even the response to Sir David Amos's murder, I, I thought was extraordinary. It was like, oh, everyone needs to be nicer to each other online. It's, you know, I mean, we need to step up security uh, uh, meetings with constituents. That's not the solution. That's that's a sticking plaster at best. This 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 radical ex Islamist extremist. You know, he wasn't affected by what someone said on the green benches in the House of Commons. Um, you know, we have allowed this into our country. We have imported it, whether it's first generation or second generation, and whether it's the Batley Grammar School teacher, whether it's MPs, we've just apparently said, well, this is how this is us now. This is what we're going to live like. I don't think that's acceptable to me. I don't think it's acceptable that you should get death threats, and I don't think it's acceptable for most voters in this country. What do we do about it? Well, the answer is we should be intolerant of into intolerant of intolerance. And uh, I mean, we had this saga with the marches the other day, where the police yes. said certain of these phrases could be interpreted in different ways. When you've got Hezbollah saying that from the river to the sea. Uh, means that we get rid of the Jews from Palestine, and the same goes for Hamas, saying the same, and others. They're very clear what it actually means. So when people chant that on the streets, I've been saying to people, you are aware what you're actually saying, and they try and interpret it in a different way. And I said, there can only be one interpretation. The people that actually wrote that or, and created that chant had a very clear meaning to it, and it was to get rid of the Jews uh, from yeah. Palestine. And I have to say that <clears throat> you, you know people sometimes without understanding this stuff, uh, then give rise to further uh, issues of hate and anger and violence. And I think we should all take a pause and ask ourselves very carefully, what are we, what are we actually saying and why are we saying it? And there are ways to do things. And, and, and I think too much at the moment is down to automatic violence and anger. And I think, you know, we have a job as politicians to make sure that we uh, don't def descend into that. But I do yeah. say that the police have got to act and act swiftly on these yeah, kinds of threats. And we really haven't, um, haven't seen that, have we? Um, can I just ask you finally about Nicola Sturgeon's appearance at the COVID inquiry yesterday? We had, you know, breaking, you know, holding, holding back the tears as she talked about how she didn't want to have been first, wish she hadn't been first minister at the time of the, of, of the, the COVID uh, crisis. We talked questions about her deleting WhatsApps, which is again absolutely outrageous. But what did you make of her claim that her biggest regret was that she didn't lock down sooner in spring 
of 2020. Do you think a single politician in charge at that time has learned anything from the actual evidence and the facts and, well, what happened in Sweden? First of all, I think this inquiry is heading off into a, a cul-de-sac of, of pointlessness at times. I mean, it's spending its time trawling away through these WhatsApp messages about each other, which I don't know what they're supposed to be telling us. You know, was there a crisis on? Yes. Were politicians and others, you know, uh, uh, panicking, worrying about what to do? Yeah. Were they getting angry with each other? Yes, that's what happens. It's what happens in most places when you have a crisis and an issue you're trying to resolve. So, first of all, I think the inquiry needs to move on to what were the effects of lockdown? Why did we lock down so often? Uh, you know, what were the lessons to be learned about this? Rather than these psychodramas that are going on inside the uh, the, uh, the the inquiry itself, uh, but with it, with regards to the ex first minister in, in Scotland, I have to say I don't know how you can accidentally or unwittingly uh, delete your WhatsApp messages when you knew very well that you'd said previously you would keep them yeah. uh, and and that they would be there as evidence. So. Uh, the whole thing seems to be a bit of a charade at the moment, frankly. It, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Sir Ian Duncan-Smith, thank you very much indeed for joining us.